Good morning, Trumptopia. A special segment of the almost daily Zengast. Hosted by yours truly, the incorrigible Mr. Zebo. I am not a man of violence. I did not throw an alarm clock against the wall this morning because I no longer own an alarm clock. Who the fuck owns actual alarm clocks these days? It's all screen devices with widgets on them. Thank you for tuning in, friends. It is I, your humble, eccentric, and slightly literary, as in slightly fictional, host uh, of this uh, esoteric-leaning radio talk show-style podcast. If uh, people can get famous for having a radio show where they just make things up and yell about how evil everyone is, um, then I think I should be able to make my own career out of... um, Speaking truth to power and, uh, you know, trying to rally all the spiritual folk to focus on that healing. And thus, this show. Welcome for tuning in. If you're new, buckle in. It's a little weird. Uh, Especially if you've never heard AM talk radio style content before. Um, And that's like... I'm not even really doing that because there's no advertising. I mean, there is advertising. There's whatever advertising Sprecher.com puts there. So I don't have to read cute little jingles like they used to uh, back in the golden years. You know, talk about whatever sort of special sponsor products. And I don't do that anyways. No one's paying me to tell you my opinions about the world. I'm doing it. Because uh, I'm either a little cuckoo nut job, you know, hippie new age weirdo that should be ignored, or um, I believe I'm responding to a spiritual calling. Uh, if that's a little crazy for you, don't worry. It's not the forefront of the show. Um, I'm very inclusive, uh, and uh, I don't. I don't think I preach an impossible thing. I, I think I, I humbly encourage people to question the reality they find themselves in. Speaking of which, welcome to the kicker of the four-part melodrama series I lovingly refer to as Trumptopia, the first something. There's a word there I haven't decided. It might be the first um, attempt at Empire, It might be the first... What is it? There's a word I can't remember. Um, What do you call a family? The first dynasty, right? Um, So as you may or may not be aware, dear listener, whoever you are out there in the void of the interwebs, uh, you may or may not know that Trump lost the... uh, Popular election, and um, I haven't. I meant to look this up. Here we go. Boom. There's a thing, a history thing. 
according to, and these people are not paying me and don't sue me for referencing them. I think that they like this sort of thing. I'm not, I don't think I have to pay them. Um, go look this up yourself. Use your favorite browser on your favorite device and type in election tracker 2020 live. That was like the keyword phrase I can, ooh, as I drop things, I came up with uh, when I saw like, I have no idea where the current count actually is. Fox News is reporting one number. Somebody else is reporting, you know, the other three are reporting a slightly different number. And I wanted to find the Associated Press because the Associated Press, fun fact, hold on, let me dig it up and get it in front of me real quick. And I'm jumping all over the place. Where is the Associated Press? Here we go. Fun historical fact that I believe is true, but I'll be honest with you, and if there was a live audience, they would laugh, I would hope, at this. But I'll be honest with you, I have not Googled this. But I think it's true, and I heard it. I saw it. I don't remember where I pulled it from. I don't know if I copy-pasted this or if I wrote it down from having heard it on the TV or the radio. But whatever, whichever medium it was, I know I was listening to a source that I'm like, I know that person. I've heard them and their reporting before. I trust them enough to take it as this is probably a reliable fact. Now, put a big fat red pin in the cork board on the wall in the imaginary room that we share in our theater of imagination together when we do this podcast. All the things we got to come back to and talk about. That sentence I just said, put a pin it up, we'll come back to it. Um, but according to the Associated Press, the Associated Press has been calling elections based on the reporting out of state-by-state -state election officials and their official counting and certification, etc. They've been, quote-unquote, calling elections. In other words, announcing the most likely winner based on a mathematical analysis of the live vote count conducted hyper-locally, right, as it is here in the United States of Trumptopia, since 19... Sorry, that was a misread. Misfire. They've been doing it since 1848. Okay, so this presents an interesting... Um, question, right? Which we got to put up on the board with a big red pin. Also, because we'll need to come back and do a special episode about this. But there's, you know, obviously multiple theories about electoral politics. Some of them take, elect, you know, uh, the state and its mechanisms very seriously. And there's obviously also theories on the opposite end of a spectrum between taking the state and its mechanisms very seriously and whatever other opposites or difference, you know, of opinion you can imagine. I, for one, as I've said before, and I'll say again, <clears throat> for clarity, for everybody's understanding, try to thread, try, I don't try, I, I try to thread my own sort of Zen middle path thesis about what I think is most likely, most organically, realistically going on in the world. And yes, that includes some things, some categories of things that people might call magic and or imaginary and or completely fake. But when it comes to simple stuff, not simple, when it comes to the complex problem of, of, uh, of social political matters, Matters of the quote-unquote real world, of, of people, you know, and the, the, the thinky thoughts of humanity. I tend to uh, trend towards non-absolutist thinking. And I explained this in some recent episodes, so tune into those and you'll see what I mean. You know, you might already grasp what I'm saying. And obviously, if you've already heard those past episodes, you're with me here. Um, so that's an interesting thing. Why do I point that out? The extreme right, which is now sort of judging and castigating Fox News as not extreme enough. Ha <laughs> ha! 
called that, called that before Trump announced he would run for office. I don't know that I've ever, I can't honestly pretend to know with certainty that I've said that on the podcast, on any of the current content that's up and available, uh, either through the RSSS feed or the homepage for this show, which by the way happens to be Sprecher.com. Come on down and visit. It's uh, it's sort of the cutting edge platform for podcasting that's truly competitive out there in the podcasting world in terms of like the platform for creators, right? Um, no one's paying me to say that. It's just, in fact, I'm paying Sprecher.com for the luxury of being able to say that to you on my own podcast show. Uh, but come on down and listen uh, and check mine and other people's podcasts out. Okay. I've talked so much, I lost track of where I was going. Oh, right. So, when it comes to the Associated Press and its... its announcements, proclamations about what happened, I take them with a very small grain of salt, but with a general kind of functional running assumption that although there might be some flaws and some errors and some mild individual cases of technical things that might be called corruption, there is not an outlandish, run by Satan himself, evil uh, network of of robots or whatever, and that and that the Associated Press is not pretending to choose the winner. They are simply analyzing the numbers as reported by the election officials, which I'll remind you, and I've already done an episode where I talk about this at length, they are local uh, volunteers and locally elected Americans, your fellow citizens, your neighbors. They are not mysterious agents from somewhere else. And, and although, yes, there's a lot of... I, there's a lot of back and forth right now, right? Because um, Trump began his presidency with the Democrats saying, well, there was undue influence from foreign actors. Um, and it was misconstrued at the time and used against the Democrats as a false narrative that Russia somehow directly hijacked or hacked or manipulated the election itself, which was not what anyone was saying. It was not what Mueller was saying. It was not what anybody on the left was actually saying. Which brings me to the point, um, we are now in the, the final chapter, the last outrage, uh, the last sort of bull in the China shop moment for the great orange chosen one. Now, he's making wacky prophecies about 2024, and we can do a whole episode about what Trump, as an individual and or as a family, right, as a as a business empire family, as a as a as an oligarchical, um, we want to rule the country ad nauseum family might do. Put a pin in that on the board, please, and thank you. But I I'd, uh, I'd like to circle back here to my main thread line here and discuss that the significance of what's going on right now as we enter the very beginnings of the lame duck session. Um, we still have uh, a bit of time. I don't have the exact number of days or weeks uh, typed out in front of me here, but obviously it's not even Thanksgiving yet, although that's around the corner. Happy Indigenous Peoples Abuse Day to you, uh, and may you enjoy your turkey dinner, uh, and may you remember to honor all the Native Indigenous people who were raped, pillaged, and destroyed in order for this great, great American country to be built here on their land. Uh, a bit early, a bit too soon perhaps, maybe a little uh, tone deaf for the moment, because everyone is collectively caught up in the uh, excitement of this, you know, kicking off the lame duck session. And I want to talk about all the crazy stuff. But to wind up the opening segment, um, the opening bit, uh, I want to talk about the Associated Press. They are currently calling it at... Joe Biden, with 291 electoral votes, that's plenty over 270 to win. Donald Trump, with a slightly 
haven't grown since the last time I was on the air, 232, okay? And we're going to look at those numbers a little closer uh, in just a second. And, and I'm going to say yes, yes, friends, there might be some wiggle room, some room for error. But I, I don't think that uh, I don't think that there's any real reason to doubt these numbers any more than we doubt the numbers every year, right? This this election isn't any more rigged than the time Obama won, or the time that Donald Trump won, or the time that Clinton won, or the, all the times that the Bush family won. At least that's my take on it. I'm going to take a breather and I'm going to drop this lovely new track by our delightfully yet to be animated imaginary DJ friend, the DJ Zed, from his current much belabored album, End Times. Uh, I'm sure some of these songs are going to be like redistributed to other albums. Um, Cinematic Trailer 101 Remix, it takes, oh, take two, Slate the DJ. Welcome back, friends. Uh, so, let's look at these numbers. As has been reported in many outlets, uh, up to and including the Washington Post, more Americans voted this year than in any election in the last 100 years. Not quite, but almost a 65% turnout amongst the voting eligible electorate of this great nation. Uh, I'm trying to get numbers on how many people not turn out, but if it's at 65, you know, that's still a lot of people that didn't vote. Each of the two candidates, for anybody out there listening that does not know or has not heard this fun fact, but I think that this will be a fact that will go down in history. Uh, and I want to talk about its implications, uh, so I want to make sure we've got the numbers. According to the Associated Press, Donald Trump got 73,198,085 votes, representing 47.3% of the total turnout. And Joe Biden got 78,873 uh, sorry, 78,873,719, just 51%. Uh, together, that's a lot of numbers, and I didn't add them, and I should. I have a calculator, and maybe I'll just do it right here, all lame and chunky, on the air with you. Uh, that's a lot of numbers, 78 million eight seven. Three, 
plus three one nine nine. Sorry for this. This is tedious airtime, isn't it? Four eighty. We get a delightful total of one hundred and fifty-two million seventy-three thousand one hundred and ninety-nine votes cast. Uh, let's ask the interwebs how many people are eligible to vote in the U.S. in 2020. Boom. Someone's already typed that. I might have already typed that. Let's see if there's an images. Let's go to images tab. Oh, it's a bunch of charts. I just want the answer to the question. Where is the answer? Oh, how many people are eligible to vote? Not turnout. It's everything's all very recent headlines turning up in the thing. The Census Bureau. Oh, let's open that. The current population survey counted 153.1 million registered voters eligible to vote. Huh. So there's one. That doesn't make sense. 65, 65% of the voting eligible population cast a ballot. Well, I'm going to have to look into that further when I'm not already on the air so as to not bore you to tears, dear audience. But here's what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to zoom in. First of all, let's congratulate uh, the uh, American Trumptopian population. Y'all really did hustle. The blue team turned out not a huge smashing epic record-breaking number more than for Cl Hillary Clinton, but enough. And the red team certainly turned out. Both teams turned out. Yay, go both teams. Um, but... This brings me to sort of an interesting point that I've been trying to figure out how to introduce. But, obviously, the current chaotic chaos... Um, of the administration is that the dear old Donnie and anybody around him that thinks that he is the master of their fate refuses to acknowledge um, these numbers as reported and insists that there's massive amounts of fraud. According to the reporting I have looked through, and I've looked on, you know, both sides... And here's the fun part. Both sides admit this is true and then spin it all in their own way, right? The spectrum of news outlets um, all, all you know, wring their hands and chant their, their magic chants and still sort of concede that these are the numbers and Joe Biden will be the next president, probably. Trump refuses. Uh, and he's not doing so... He's not doing this all just to be a big fat baby. That's an easy, easy, easy dismissal, folks. It's so easy, I would dare say that it's probably an ego trap. Ching, 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 ching. Bells and whistles, right? Like, don't fall for that shit. No matter who you're targeting. Um... You got to watch out for the ego traps and you got to see, uh, try to make sure that you don't fall for them. And uh, let me tell you something, folks. It is the humble opinion of this observer of humanity, this, um, this humble opinion podcast show talking voice in your ear. It is my humble opinion that if we're really going to look deep at what's going on, if we're going to really try to tear away the nonsense and the, and the baloney and the malarkey and the political agendas and look beyond that, like behind that, and I'm not talking into some scaremongery, theoretical, conspiracy theory-driven, you know, echo chamber of madness either. I mean into the plain and simple 
objective truths of what it seems to be doing to people in real life. The system wants as many of us all, as many of you, I might say in a very us versus them kind of way, um, which I, you know, I'm trying not to do. Uh, but the system wants us to to split ourselves up. Uh, and you got to give it to them. It looks, if you just look at the map, you can see sort of and consider it like just a snapshot in an, in an ever simmering, bubbling, you know, uh, like boiling cauldron of evolution of the, the states and what, you know, color they are. You've got you've got two big blocks of blue and and sort of a a kind of wonky middle block of red that's all trying to butt in over here on the coast. You basically got your old Mason Dixon line going blue red with some red encroachment into the north, which is where I believe we used to, you know the politicians like to call the blue wall. And then you got the blue coast over here on the left with its sort of attempt to to encroach in towards the middle uh, with the New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona spur. Um, and what I, what I fear, what I'm, you know, here sort of warning against is this tribalistic us versus them, let's divide ourselves so intensely as to that achieve that goal, like to allow for the achieving of the goal of having a postmodern civil war. Um, which we should not in any way, shape, or form allow ourselves to slide into dear friends and f internet family. I would suggest, no matter where you're at, no matter what country you're in, if they got you fighting each other, um, then, then the system is winning and you are not no matter which side of fighting each other you might be on. Uh, and that's that's my bold take. But uh, also, I want to share with you that it kind of fascinates me that this is happening. Years ago, when I first imagined a story concept, which I claim all legal rights to, this is mine, I'm not stealing it from anybody, I don't believe. I do believe this is my own original um, authorship here, and I'm willing to talk about it on my podcast, so don't rip me off. If I see this on a movie poster in less than three years, I will be annoyed and bordering on wanting to be litigious. But um, like the Battle of American Empires, Guntopia, Red Vert. Now there is already a like Red State, right? Someone's already used that. And there is an animated show which might be considered analogously, symbolically addressing the same issue called Red vs. Blue, which is set inside a video game. Halo, I believe. Um, but I'm talking about the carving out of the middle section of America um, and the drawing of a, of a new sort of Mason-Dixon line, but instead it's sort of the, the blue coasts versus the red center. And people would have to give up on some of the fringe states and like trade out and migrate, right? Like if you're red in, in some of the, the coastal states... Uh, you're going to want to move in towards the center. Um, because I I foresee in that sort of like, it's too logical, it's too plausible, it's too projectable based on where we're at today. I foresee a sort of Trumptopian aggregate of, uh, or hijacking, uh, aggregation or hijacking of the Republican Party. The Republican Party trying to break off from the Trumptopian Party and maybe not quite surviving that. And the new duopoly being Democrats versus the Trumptopians with Republicans being some sort of third party leader in the ever confusing and sort of shifting collection of third party parties that sit over there in the corner and generally argue amongst themselves and get basically ignored by everybody else. Uh, no offense, you guys. Um, I love you. I love third party people. I say keep it up. Um, because I'm, I'm not a big fan of the duopoly. I'm also a toaster oven 
In the eyes of the system, I might as well be someone's Hitachi wand. Um, my opinion on this means nothing. But I hope, dear friends, it is my, my sincere and honest prayer that my musings and opinions on all this might mean something to you and inspire you to go questioning your own reality, as I like to say. Um, the system, let me say something right here, which some people might find controversial, some people might find obvious, some people might find risque, which is just the French word for risky, I believe. The system wants our violence on the streets. Don't sue me for saying that. Don't get mad at me, the system. I don't mean, I don't necessarily mean the governors and the and the police chiefs and the people in the uniforms necessarily, folks. Right? Put a pin in this. I mean something really specific by the system uh, or the system of oppression. And I have taken brief dives into my my explanation of what that is in past episodes. So swim around the show and see if you can't catch on with that. Um, but also know that this idea, this this idea that I'm talking about in rambling around in circles of the, the uh, system wanting our violence and the system engineering this blue block versus red block mentality is that I, I foresee a future, a generation or three or six down the road, where we are living like War Incorporated. Have you seen that gem of a movie? Dig that up. I have, I don't remember if it's available on Netflix. I don't may not be available on Netflix at this hot time, but it was at one point, and it was available on something else. But you, it should be around. I have seen it on on plain old fashioned basic cable, uh, edited for content. I think. But it's it's a it's an interesting, fascinating movie that I don't know if it was intentional or not, but it really it really prompted me to question like what is the long term goal of the gun ammo sexual like agenda? And I don't mean that pejoratively, like free free will, free rights, guns are enshrined in the I don't want to take anybody's guns away, folks. I've said it before on my show. I'm sure I will have to say it again. Keep your guns. I'm going to... If there is some sort of outrageous fighting in the streets at all levels, in all states, in all cities, I will team up with people with guns and probably take upon myself some shooting if it boils down to it. I'm not opposed to defending one's life and liberty. All right? Don't, don't accuse me of that. Don't project that on me. I'm just calling out something else entirely in the opposite direction that we should be wary of. Because if we fall for it, it means being part of the problem. It means becoming a participant in the civil war. It means becoming a, a participant or a or a victim of the race war and the culture war and the just straight up Wild West gun violence on the streets war um, and all the fabricated wars. Which we don't, I think, I maybe you disagree. Maybe you love war. Maybe that's one of the things you love about Trump because Trump himself, who, you know, ran away from being part of military service, um, and as some uh, brilliant meme maker, anonymous meme maker pointed out somewhere very early on in the whole Trump show, uh, not one member of the entire Trump slash Trump family has ever in its history of being part of the United States of America um, as citizens here ever participated in military service. Now, some people would say, who cares? Some people would be like, I don't bat it doesn't matter. I still believe every word he says. And that is crazy talk to me. Um, because believe it or not, while I oppose ideologically and philosophically and spiritually the 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 system of oppression, the quote industrial military industrial complex, 
I don't oppose the human beings caught up in those machinations, right? I don't hate politicians. I think polit politics is uh, all jacked up and corrupt and, um, and in deep need. And this is the earth-shattering news where people on both sides are like, the fuck is wrong? What, is he crazy? I think everybody needs deep spiritual healing. In fact, if you'll join me on my Instagram feed, um, my most recent, one of my most recent posts reads, in my humble opinion, the only real, quote, bunny ears revolution, end quote, end bunny ears, is species-wide spiritual healing. Call me crazy, but one of the reasons I think that is true, because everything else about society points in the opposite direction. Everything about the way corrupt government works, everything about the, the corrupt uh, uh, economic system works, everything about the way the corrupt um, societal system of systems, all the corruption that we see around us, which I do not pretend is absolute, nor do I think are lizard people involved or, you know, Satan directly. I have a very nuanced opinion and we'll take a deep dive into it soon enough in this and in past and in future episodes. But I want to leave you with that thought, friends. Because I don't know where you are. Whoever you are, dear listeners, I mean, I live every day thinking of how I can be of service to you, for you are my audience. Uh, and it, that's my job, right? As a voice in your head, attempting to entertain and prod you into questioning reality. Um, it's my job to wake up every day and think, how can I be of service to you to be entertaining and a little bit, you know, whoa, rattling of your uh, sense of what the fuck's going on. Um, the system wants our violence. The system wants a revolution. The system wants you to think you can take down the system from which you bought your guns and ammo. <laughs> right? Like... You gave the system money and now you're going to go and try to kill them with what you bought from them. I hate to point it out, folks, but I think the system is savvy. I think the system is self-aware enough to know they sold you the guns that you want to use in a, quote, civil war or a, quote, revolution. That's why I giggle at those ideas and think they are absurd. And humbly encourage you all to think it through likewise and maybe join the rest of us over here on this notion that if we focused on revolutionary species-wide spiritual healing, that might actually be what the system of oppression is desperately trying to get us to not realize, to not activate, to not participate in. And as I'll bring this back around to the Trumptopian shenanigans, that's exactly what I think Trump is going to be about during the lame duck session. We'll talk, a bit, uh, we'll talk about all of that a little bit more after a brief musical break with the uh, G-Funk 102 Isolation Blues Jams track by the infamously animated DJ Z.
the Lame Duck Sessions. What do they seem to be about? Let's give that a look and discuss some things and then connect back to the spiritual side of the whole shenanigans, of the whole mess. Um, Trump, historically speaking, from long before he became the commander in chief and the you know leader of the free world president of the united states potus uh the most powerful man in the world long before he announced trump had already exhibited the strategic sort of like clusterfucky approach of i'm going to sue to distract and then get what i really want and then sort of get rid of the lawsuit and he uses litigiousness. He uses the very threat of suing as a psychological tactic to get other objectives done while people scramble around sweating bullets about when the 90s are really going to sue. That's, what, that's just at the, the entry level of it. Here's what I think, and I know that other folks have said this. In, it's been reported as, you know, an, not, it's not original analysis here. Um... But I bring to it the, the spiritual uh, through line. Trump, true form, true to his own form, is going to be Trump. And he's going to sling infinite amount of nonsense, malarkey, bullshit, whole cloth lying, and things woven together with bits of half-truth, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. The usual thing. I've said it before. That's his genius. He knows how to get the one linchpin nugget of truth right there in the sweet nuggety center of this giant shit pile of nonsense. Uh, and I've never quite said it like that. Pat, high five for, to myself for having phrased it that way today. Because um, it's, it's a talent. Not everyone is really good at that. People lose track of their lies. He doesn't bother tracking them. He just makes up new lies. And then backs up and backpedals as he needs to. Um, and he swamps you with new nonsense. And he also kind of overtly tells you what the fuck he's actually doing. Mixed in with all the nonsense. Um, if not this time, he's, if not a full on attempt, this is a sort of dress rehearsal of how to do a couple of things. Um, this entire presidency. And I think we're at a critical, like, moment, a sort of denouement, right? We've we've closed, or are trying very strongly to close a portal on the probability waveform function branches that, that branch out from Trump actually having numerically won the, uh, the popular vote and the electoral college vote. And we got to put a pin in the Electoral College thing because we're still a few days out from their actual meetings. And state legislatures, many of which are in Republican control, have the opportunity to do legal, next to legal, almost not quite illegal, but sort of gray area and outright blatantly illegal things during this critical juncture. And the irony is that for many, many, many years, this part of the mechanism was just sort of considered pro forma. Well, not officially considered pro forma, but just sort of did its job. And the public just ran with the projection announcement because everything, all the dominoes would fall into the proper places. And indeed, um, since whenever the fuck, I'm very sure the Associated Press, which for those who may not be aware the Associated Press that we talked about earlier, they are sort of like the main trunk of raw frontline reporting. Um, many a media outlet just taps into, buys licenses or references. I'm sure there's some sort of programmatic system to work it out. And I got to look into that because, um, you know, uh, I respect the Associated Press. They really maintain in this world of post-truth, post-Trumptopian fantasy thinking, 
pause, put a pin in that because I want to do a whole episode about how that works. In fact, I, I, in the title of this show, I was talking about, or in the description of this show, I was talking about Trump's word magic. I have previously done posts on Instagram and Facebook and uh, here in the podcast about this word magic issue. And maybe we'll dive into it a little bit here before we end today's episode. But um, where was I going? <laughs> From before the first election that he won, Trump has two-facedly, manipulatively, um, egomaniacally, pathologically lied about America. About the, the political mechanisms of America. I think. It is my humble opinion that he has done so. And having done so, he then can create a mental bubble space, a cultural, uh, ideological, mentally manipulative um, fan base environment, a world uh, of agreed upon nonsense, where in which because it is it is operating uh, i think quite honestly using the mechanisms of cult of personality um and you know those require of the audience of the fan base that want to prove themselves true blue fans it requires their blind faith belief and their kind of abdication of questioning thought while also spoon feeding them propagandist talking points about how everyone else is brainwashed and only you can see the truth clearly because you've got this guiding light in your in your true leader this personality around which they have built a cult um this slain duck session, he's going to make a lot of noise and irritate the bejesus of people with lit litigation as hard as possible. Simultaneously, dear friends and listeners, he is going to milk his base for as much donation money as he humanly can while also trying to retain their admiration and love for him to carry over into some sort of empire building outside of politics. Whether it be, and this has, you know, been discussed in mainstream media already, so I'm not, you know, I'm not reporting anything new here. I'm agreeing with, I think, that this reasonable assessment of his possible, like, long, medium-term goals, beyond the fact that he might very well likely try to run again in four years. It's, it's within the realm of very likely things a person like Trump would think precisely in the situation that he's in, which is having lost the election, according to the rest of the system. Now, let me clarify something for you, dear friends. I am in no way, shape, or form an apologist nor a defender of the system. Now, there's a couple of different systems, right? But I lump them all together into one system. But there's also, in my definition of it, some deep, profound layers because most people are busy arguing about what people are doing. I'm sitting here going, we should really be concerned about what, like, the deep mind, the, the hive mind, and the, the spiritual network, the, the consciousness of humanity is doing. Because that's where the real root of all the problems, in my humble opinion, originate including this person, this this people puppet, this symptomology of all the crazy things that are wrong with our society bundled up into one lumpy meat suit. Um, because that's what we do reflexively to our leaders, I think, I suspect, in esoteric terms terms um well there's a lot we can discuss and there's a lot of 
there's just too much content. There's too many things to analyze and unpack on any given moment. Uh, so the podcast episodes can spiral wildly out of control. But in an attempt to avoid doing that and to keep to the newly proposed uh, um, time frames and structures, I'm going to transition now, th- friends. I'm going to thank you for joining me on today's little mental journey and br- and share with you some things that I think, well, that I've come to as conclusions, right? I think these things are true. I think Trump is going to try to rage like a rabid bull in an extremely overpacked and very delicate China shop and make as big a mess as possible, right? I don't even want to start to, to like worry about how deep into the armed services divisions he can get in this, in this attempt to oust and replace key players. Because that's the other thing he's doing underneath the fanfare of refusing to give a respectable concession speech. Um, In one of my recent episodes, I referenced a meme that someone had made and a prediction that an acquaintance of mine on Facebook made and that I have often correlated as... it's It's not new, right? Like, I too have also genuinely felt that to my understanding and my comprehension... There seems to be a weird, reminiscent, history echoing back on itself vibe with Richard Nixon and Donald Trump. But they're not, like, Donald Trump is not repeating all the exact same moves, and he's not, as most certainly, he's gone well beyond the the level of damage um, to the office and the integrity of the sort of collective belief in the mechanisms of state. Um, And that, dear friends, no matter which side of the political spectrum you're on, is indeed something to be deeply concerned about, in my humble opinion. But, having rambled at you quite enough for one day, or at least for one session, it is now 5555. 55 minutes, 55 seconds it was just then when I looked up. Um, on the clock here in the virtual studio uh, app for Sprecher.com. Um, I want to transition and pivot out to my uh, farewell statements. And thank you all, whoever you are, that are tuning in to listen. According to my uh, podcast statistics and analytics page on the geolocation tab, I've got listeners in Brazil, Portugal, Netherlands, France, the Russian Federation, that's a little scary. Canada, no offense to, to, to normal, everyday human beings in Russia, but um, the last thing I need is to offend anybody in, like, you know, deep pockets of control over there. Uh, Canada, the United Kingdom, India, Germany, and, of course, here in the great orange um, kingdom of the United States of Trumptopia. Uh And, of course, wherever the mysterious bucket of places that other represents at the bottom of the list. Uh, I admire you the most. You're a strong 8.88% of my total uh, audience. Uh, Don't know where you're from, but huzzah. Thanks for listening. Um, uh, And yeah, whoever you are, I truly, genuinely, humbly thank you for tuning in and joining me on a spirally ramble on an almost daily basis. Although, you know, I know that sometimes I take weeks off at a time. Um, But that's just so that, you know, to try to prod you into, you know, digging deep into the past episodes. Uh, For those who may be wondering, this show is not a serial episodic structured show. It is a daily, ad hoc, unscripted, except for the special series episodes that are indeed scripted, but that's a different thing. And those are usually clearly marked. Uh, it's me sharing with you, my dear fans uh, and internet family, my word jazz on the intersection of politics, spirituality, uh, and, uh, the, and the ever-loving question, WTF is going on around here? I don't pretend to have 
the penultimate answer, but I most certainly have a really interestingly weird theory based on my own life experience, which includes some direct phenomenological shit that is a little out there, folks. Um, so tune in for more. As always, I, uh, I wish you peace, love, and grooviness blossoming in your heart. And I'll leave you with this delightful uh, track from our um, favorite imaginary DJ performance artist entitled French House 101 Remix, Sur la Danse Table.